So we are now on the second part of the viral diseases in aquaculture. So this presentation will discuss about the viral hemorrhagic septicemia or the VHS. It is also known as the Ectivid disease. So what is VHS and what causes it? So VHS is a serious, highly contagious, fatal disease of fish. It affects many fresh and marine species. And the disease has occurred in farm rainbow trout in Japan and Europe and in wild marine fish. The virus was first reported in the Great Lakes region of North America in the year 2005. VHS is a disease of farm rainbow trout, farm torbot, and farmed Japanese flounder, as well as a broad range of wild freshwater and marine species. For the etiological agent, the the etiological agent of VHS is a rhabdovirus belonging to the genus Nabi rhabdovirus, family Rhabdoviridae, which also includes the causative agent of the IHN, which is the infectious hematopoietic necrosis virus. The virus has four genotypes, then designated as genotype 1, 2, 3, and 4. For the genotype 1, it has five uh, subtypes. We have uh, 1A, B, C, D, and E. So this diagram here shows the prevalent host of the different genotypes as well as its location. We also have here the prevalent host as well as the location of the genotypes 2, 3, 4A, and 4B respectively. For the survival outside the host, the virus uh, survival outside the host will be dependent on the physical chemical conditions of the aqueous medium and on temperature. The virus survives for longer periods at 4 degrees centigrade compared with 20 degrees centigrade. For its survival in the fresh water, it can persist in the fresh water for 28 to 35 days at 4 degrees centigrade and has been found to be infective for one year at 4 degrees centigrade in filtered fresh water. So the reservoir of VHSV are clinically infected fish as well as covered carriers among cultured, feral, or wild fish. There are several factors that influence the susceptibility to the disease VHS. In the rainbow trout, there is genetic variability for susceptibility so that the younger the fish, the higher the susceptibility. For the susceptible host species, so, so far the virus has been isolated from approximately 80 different fish species throughout these regions. The most susceptible farm species is the rainbow trout genotype 1A, although VHS is also reported to cause mortality in farm torbot and Japanese flounder. The disease is more abundant in populations of young, not previously infected fish. The VHSV is not known to infect fish eggs. Highest prevalence of the virus was also found in shoaling fishes. For the transmission mechanisms of the viral hemorrhagic septicemia virus, the transmission is uh, mainly horizontal through contact with other infected fish, contaminated water, and the virus is shed from infected fish via the urine and the reproductive fluids. Transmission readily occurs in the temperature range between 1 to 15 degrees centigrade, but can occur up to 20 degrees centigrade. There are also no indications or evidence of true vertical transmission of the viral hemorrhagic septicemia virus. The incubation time is dependent on temperature in the dose and it is about 5 to 12 days at higher temperatures. The kidney, the heart, and the spleen tissues yield the highest viral titers. 
So in this figure, we have the viral hemorrhagic septicemia in the rainbow trout. So note the pale color of the stomach region, pinpoint hemorrhages in the fatty tissue, as well as the pale gills. So the disease generally occurs at temperatures between 4 and 14 degrees centigrade. At water temperatures between 15 and 18 degrees centigrade, the disease generally takes a short course with modest accumulated mortality. Lower water temperatures generally result in an extended disease course with low daily mortality but high accumulated mortality. The VHS outbreaks occur during all seasons but are most common in spring when water temperatures are rising or fluctuating. For the target organs and infected tissue, in septic stages of the disease, the virus is abundant in all tissues, including skin and muscles. The target organs are the kidney, the heart, and the spleen, as these are the sites in which the virus is most abundant. In chronic stages, the virus titers can become high in the brain. For the mortality and the morbidity, the mortality will vary depending on many environmental and physiological conditions, most of which have not been fully determined. The disease, in general, is a cool or cold water disease with highest mortality at temperatures around 9 to 12 degrees centigrade. So VHS outbreaks have been reported in both freshwater and seawater environment with salinities up to 36 parts per thousand or PPT and at temperatures ranging from 2 to 20 degree centigrade. So most disease outbreaks are observed in spring when temperatures are fluctuating. For the sampling, selection of the individual specimen, the clinical inspections should be carried out during a period when the temperature of the water is below 14 degrees centigrade or whenever the water temperature is likely to reach its lowest annual point. All production units should be inspected for the presence of dead, weak, or abnormally behaving fish. Particular attention should be paid to the water outlet area where water leak or where weak fish tend to accumulate due to the water current. For the best organ or tissues, the optimal tissue material to be examined is the spleen, the anterior kidney, and either part or either heart or encephalon or the brain. In some cases, ovarian fluid and milk must be examined. In case of small fry, whole fish less than 4 cm long can be minced with sterile scissors or a scalpel after removal of the body behind the gut opening. If a sample consists of whole fish with a body length between 4 cm and 6 cm, the viscera, including the kidney, should be collected. For the samples or tissues that are not suitable, so the virus is very sensitive to enzymatic degradation, therefore sampling tissues with high enzymatic activities, such as the viscera and the liver, should be avoided. For the clinical signs, the clinical signs of the viral hemorrhagic septicemia include rapid onset of mortality, lethargy, darkening of the skin, exophthalmia, and anemia or pale gills. There are also hemorrhages at the base of the fins, the gills, eyes and skin, abnormal swimming, a distended abdomen due to the edema in the peritoneal cavity. So this is a diagram showing the hemorrhaging in the internal organs as well as the exophthalmia. For the gross pathology, 
So this includes generalized petechial hemorrhaging in the skin and the muscle tissue, particularly the dorsal muscles and the internal organs. It is important to examine the dorsal musculature for the presence of petechial bleeding, which is very common sign of viral hemorrhagic septicemia infection. So we have here the presence of hemorrhages in the muscles. So we have here the hemorrhagic areas on the skin of the gizzard shad, hemorrhagic areas near the eye, and we also have here the swim bladder vesicles that are filled with fluid and the external hemorrhages around the eyes. So we have here the pale organs, the presence of a darkened color and the standard fluid abdomen. We also have here the VHS and the rainbow trout now showing the uh, swollen stomach and the pop eye and the petechial hemorrhages in fat body surrounding the pancreas. For the gizzard shad that is infected with VHS, so notice the presence of echymotic hemorrhages around the mouth and on the sides of the body. For the external gross lesions, we have the presence of exophthalmia, echymotic hemorrhages in, um, in the sides of the body, as well as the base of the fins and the uh, vent. So other examples include uh, hemorrhages in the musculature, petechial hemorrhages, liver bleeding, hemorrhagic enteritis, petechial hemorrhages and membrane thickening of the swim bladder, and uh, several areas of congestion in the vasculature of the swim bladder. In the chronic state of infection, the affected fish do not, in general, exhibit external signs. The VHS can also occur in a nervous form, characterized by severe abnormal swimming behavior, such as constant flashing and or spiraling. For the clinical chemistry, the RBC level is very low in the acute phase of VHS and the blood appears light red and transparent. So the virus is sensitive to a number of common disinfectants. For the histopathology, so the main histological findings include hemorrhagic lesions on necropsy. Uh, we have hepatitis with multifocal hemorrhagic necrosis in the liver, endocarditis and hematopoietic necrosis in the kidney and the spleen. So we have here uh, histopathology of the kidney in H and E stain section showing Necrotic hematopoietic tissue. So these are the necrotic hematopoietic tissue in between the kidney tubules. Additional lesions include the hemorrhage in the viscera, hemorrhage in the somatic muscle of the kidney. We also have the loss of the hemopoietic cells and the accumulation of inflammatory cells in the uh, liver. For the control and prevention, examples of practices that have been successful in reducing the number of infected forms in an endemic area include preventing reinfection and uh, particularly the practice of stamping out. So when we say stamping out, that means carrying out under the authority of the veteran, veterinary administration on confirmation of the disease, the killing of the animals which are affected and those suspected of being affected in the herd. So although research on vaccine development for VHS have been ongoing for more than three decades, commercial vaccine is not yet available for this particular viral disease. And for the chemotherapy, no therapies are currently so another control measure is the disinfection of the eggs and the larvae. So disinfection of the eye and the green egg is an efficient and cost-effective measure for stopping the spread of the disease. So in general, an increase in temperature, restricted feeding, reduced fish density, and restricted handling may reduce the mortality. 
and endemically infected farms, stocking with native alevins is usually done as higher water temperatures as possible. So these native alevins re uh, refers to the newly hatched salmon that is still attached to the yolk. 